name is Sam Obey from New York Wedding Ring. And I'm Michelle, a member of the SPAlaska.com team. And today Sam is going to teach us how to use gold and the history behind gold and gold mining and what are the steps in between so we could have a beautiful piece of jewelry afterwards. So can you tell me about the process going from gold mining and sifting and finding gold to actually having a finished product? Sure. Now, nowadays, people don't really pan for gold that much unless it's for fun. Because okay. most of the loose gold that has, uh, was mined during the gold rush, now mining companies will crush rock with high gold content and leach the gold out chemically. So they will sell the pure gold it'll get alloyed by a manufacturer and then made into jewelry by a jeweler. Um, if someone does pan for gold and collects enough, you first need to, um, to smelt it or refine it. Even though gold is the only metal that's ever found pure in nature, which is the reason it's the first metal that was ever used by humans, it's not always pure. And uh, the impurities have to be removed chemically. Okay. Once that's done, you can alloy it uh, you can make it to white gold with the addition of palladium or nickel. You can make it to yellow gold with a little bit of uh, silver and copper, or rose with just a little bit more copper. And then we start with where we started this morning, melting it down, pouring an ingot, rolling it out, forming it into a ring, soldering it and polishing it. Thank you for the education and Thank the experience. You. Can you go through the process of making a ring? Uh, well, it starts with, with designing. So we'll talk on the phone a little bit and figure out what exactly the couple wants. It takes for a simple band about seven, eight hours. For That's complicated it. jewelry, huh. it'll take about two days. Um, and depending on the season, it's best to call at least a month in advance. And then we'll set up the day, start in the morning, and step by step, we'll make the rings together until we're done. So you buy the supplies for your clients? Yeah, I'll get all the gold and gemstones for people if they want. And then at the end of the day, uh, we have a finished ring in a box. I didn't realize it could take such little time to make something like that. It usually takes longer to learn how to do it, but since we're getting one-on-one -on -one attention, we can make it happen in a day. Wow. Very cool. This is 24 karat gold shot. It's going to be a little bit easier to make a ring quickly with pure gold. And uh, you can remelt it several times without getting any impurities. Once it's alloyed with a little bit of copper, you've got to be a little bit more careful about how you work with it. So we're going to start by heating up this ingot mold. We don't want to change the temperature of the gold too much. It's going to go from about 2,000 degrees to about 500, and then to room temperature. So we'll start by lighting our torch. Should I wear gloves or anything? Okay just to hold that oh, okay. really hot thing. So you have workshops where people can learn more about the process and then they can make a final uh, wedding uh, engagement ring or wedding ring. Right, I teach wedding and engagement ring classes and um, they're all custom classes so I try and tailor them for each client. Some people come in with some jewelry from their family that they want to melt down and make into their new wedding ring, which is and quite sentimental and charming. Um, people sometimes come with family diamonds, and sometimes people just want to see the process, get to enjoy it so they can have a little bit more history with it. With pure gold, which is what we're going to do, but with other alloys, any alloy with copper, you need some flux in there to keep the copper from oxidizing. It's flux, and I'm just going to use it to coat the bottom, and that just protect the metal a little bit. Wiggle it around, make sure it's up to temperature, and then I will pour it. Oh, that's so cool. Get this in time while it's still glowing a little bit. There's a glowing red piece of gold. Wow. It's shining. It cooled so quickly. Yes. Try not to go straight inside because it's going to blow all that carbon off. I mean, you know we're going to have the barrier. Am I doing okay with this? Yep. 
over that piece of silver. And just keep it steady. Try and cover all of that silver with the flame if you can. Looks so pretty. I'm going to bring it so that it's sitting right there and pour it. Very good. That's good. So next we just want to hammer it a little bit and this just pushes the crystals around a little bit. But if you heat it up to the right temperature then it will get soft and malleable again. So do you remember as kids we used to take paper clips and bend them back and forth until they would break? Right. Same thing would happen with a gold paper clip. Okay. Unless you heat it up and cool it like this. <laughs> Literally cool. It makes a great sound. <laughs> a piece of gold. This is a rolling mill. I haven't had a chance to use it yet because it was delivered last night. And these are square rollers for rolling ingots. So I'm going to do This is a square rod. I'm going to then flatten it to make it wider so that it will look like a ring. And how thick does it, should it be on a ring finger? I usually like making them between one and two millimeters. Okay. And now I'm just going to cut the ends. Oh, very cool. It almost fits. <laughs> shined up. How can somebody who's interested in making their own band contact you? The best way is through my website, which is newyorkweddingring.com. Unfortunately, I have to spell the whole thing out. And there I've got contact information, a form that you can submit um, as an email or a uh, current number to call. So thank you so much for the education. Basically, it's a wonderful incentive for people to take your workshop or take any jewelry making workshop and to create something so beautiful on your own. Well, thank you. It was fun working with you. Great. Thanks so much. Cheers.